Hello, welcome to episode one of SBJ's Painting School. Uh, today we're going to be covering the equipment that I'm going to be using uh, in this little project and yeah, basically giving you a checklist of stuff that I'm using and you can choose to use too. So without further ado, I'm going to play the intro and I'll see you in a sec. So, today is all about having a look at all of the different equipment that we're going to be using across the course of this video. You do not need to use all of this. If you have your own methods of doing it, you can do so. Uh, these are all the pieces of equipment that I'm using. Uh, you do not have to go out and buy all of these, nor do you have to pay the price that I may have paid to get any of this. So, the most important thing for me for this entire series is going to be an airbrush. I find it exceedingly useful for all of my painting. As soon as I got my first airbrush I can't remember the last time I did a bulk of brush painting to do anything. It gives you a much nicer finish. Uh, I find batch painting is even faster using an airbrush. However, you can do all of this with a brush if you so wish. Bear in mind that you may get slightly different uh, finished products. So, off the bat, let's talk about cost, because with an airbrush, the cost can be something as simple as £30, or it can be something as expensive as in the three £500 mark, depending on what kind of kit you are willing to invest in. This is my expensive airbrush, and I did not pay for it. I won it in an online, on an Instagram competition. So please bear that in mind with the fact that I've got one of these airbrushes. This airbrush was bought for me by my wife for a birthday present, so once again, I didn't necessarily go out and purchase these things. Um, I would recommend to anyone, if you're unsure about airbrushing, go out and buy one of the cheap kits that you can get off Amazon that has a compressor and comes with a free airbrush, because most of the time you buy a compressor and it comes with a free gun to use. My old gun that I had from, because that's what I did back in the day, my old gun, never let me down. <laughs> as long as you clean it and do all of the little bits and bobs that you're supposed to to make sure it keeps working, I never had a problem with it. The only reason I no longer use it is because my wife upgraded my airbrush with this one, which is the Neo for Iowata, which is, uh, when she bought it for me, I think it was about £75, uh, depending on what website you're getting it from. It might have increased because this is about five years old now. This is my Harder and Steinbeck Infinity CR Plus. It is a fantastic airbrush and I did not pay a penny for it. I won it in an Instagram competition. Uh, these airbrushes, I believe, go from anywhere from £150 up to about £300, depending on which one you get. I cannot, it is a great airbrush. I would not have bought it myself if I was, if I didn't win it in a competition. So let's bear that in mind for this video because that is very important. I would recommend that if you don't have an airbrush, you don't have a setup, the best thing you can do is buy one of the starter kits on Amazon, websites like that, where I think Fox is the brand, something to do with Fox. I'll see if I can find a link of the brand that I originally got. Uh, and I got one of the compressors where it's got the big silver tank at the top and the big black tank at the bottom, which is used for storing additional air, as far as I'm aware. Um, and I still have that. I've had that now for five years as well that is sat below me on my desk. I'm not gonna peer down there because that's in the deep dark depths of the desk which I haven't cleaned up specifically for this video. Um, however, you all, I would always recommend making sure that you get a compressor that has, uh, where you can change the PSI, uh, the, the pressure that you're gonna be dealing with because sometimes you're gonna want to put your pressure up, sometimes you're gonna want to put your pressure down depending on what you wanna do. So yes, you do not need one of these airbrushes. Now there may be people out there who tell you that you do need one of these airbrushes and that's okay because that is that person's personal opinion. To do the stuff that I do, I have done it all with cheap airbrushes. I am just using these because they are what are available to me. That's now out of the way. Let's clear that off. Um, bizarrely, I tend to use my Neo 
as my fine airbrush and that's because it is equipped with a finer needle but I can do a lot of the fine work with the harder airbrush but it is a little bit more difficult in certain situations but I use this as my bulk before if I was doing tanks and stuff it, I'd always be using this but if I was doing uh, sort of skin and uh, going in on small surfaces like on this orc here when I eventually go in on that I will probably use the Neo for going in and doing the skin on that but if I was doing the armor on all the panels on a train or a tank I use this this is it's my workhorse it does everything I needed to do you may get people who turn around and say that you need to invest in a super duper compressor. My friend Jody has a super duper compressor and a super duper airbrush and he does amazing work. I also know plenty of people who do amazing work and they use the cheapest of the cheap. So that is down to you, trial and error. If you have a friend who has any of this equipment, ask if you can have a go under their supervision. You, you, it's sort of one of those rules of you don't touch another man's airbrush. That's that's whatever. I personally, if I want someone to get into airbrushing, I will let them have a go. That's airbrushes out of the way. Now with that, you need to make sure that you've got a hose and you've got your compressor. They're the main things that you need, apart from paint and water, to get that going. Future Sam here. Whilst editing this video, I picked up on some bits of equipment that I should have said about. I should have told you these are a bit important things. Uh, first of all, roller kitchen roll does not need to be expensive in any way, shape or form. It, I think you can buy packs of it for like 34p in Wilkinson's if you want just some. It's just something to use to wipe up messes. And it's just general cleaning bits. It's also handy for cleaning the hopper of your airbrush if you need to. Um, the other two things are a personal preference or you do you sort of thing. Now, before the summer, well, before the summer of 2021, I would not have cared so much about this next thing. However, since I got pneumonia, <laughs> I, I wear it all the time when I'm airbrushing now and it is a massive part of my airbrushing because my lungs cannot cope with not having it. Prior to, used to use, not use it fine. I had one and I'd use it occasionally, but it was never an auto use, whereas now it is. And that is a face mask. Uh, you can get these for, I think five pounds, 10 pounds. It's been a very long time since I bought it, but you can get these off the usual Amazon places like that. Uh, very, very important piece of equipment to keep your lungs safe. Um, it's because I tend to use acrylics, it's never been a massive issue, but now it, it's really started to affect my breathing. I'd recommend getting one. If you don't use it, that is completely your decision. I wouldn't recommend it. If you are using enamels or aggressive thinners and things like that, without a doubt, use a mask. Be, just be sensible. Um, we've been wearing masks for the last two, well, some of us have been wearing masks for the last two years, so shouldn't shouldn't be difficult for us to do really it sucks and it's hot especially if you're airbrushing when it's the summertime and things like that but please take care of your lungs this is just a small part that i'm putting in now uh, because i want to sort of highlight it second is a spray booth i don't use one because i'm not necessarily trying to catch all of the particles because i'm wearing a mask and because i use acrylics doesn't mean don't use it if you want to get a spray booth get a spray booth uh my friend jody uses a spray booth uh, and yeah I know most people who use enamels use a spray booth as well so bear that in mind so yeah small little bit that I've cut in uh, and yeah just add this to the list of things that you think you might need thanks so airbrushes done so let's talk about the things that I use with the airbrush I think the most important thing more than anything is how you clean your airbrush that's cleaning every now and again cleaning in between different colors and cleaning when you finished if you do not clean your airbrush when you are done with it then that's when you're going to start having problems and you're going to start having issues where it keeps blocking up all the time things like that so it's so important to make sure that you have all of those things ready so I guess the most important thing for me, which isn't glamorous and it isn't expensive, 
but these are so useful for me to when it comes to cleaning your airbrush. You will get people who tell you that you can use Vallejo airbrush cleaner, which I do use when it comes to the end of my session. I will then use this to clean out and flush out my airbrush properly. However, when you are working with somewhere in the region between five, maybe even one, but five to 30 different colors over the course of a session, depending on how long you've got, this is the best method I have found for cleaning your airbrush. Um, also worth mentioning, gloves. I use these black, I think they're called black tattooist gloves. They are, uh, here we go. They are Bodyguard's Nitrile Medical Examination Gloves. There you go. Uh, I use the black ones. Uh, I am a large, which is weird because I have quite small hands. Um, so bear that in mind as well. So gloves are exceedingly helpful because more often than not, you can use your gloves to test your paint flow and stuff like that on too as well. Um, so this is literally a one litre paint kettle pot, and I'm pretty sure I paid some in the region of about a pound, maybe one pound fifty for it. It is just a pot I use for tipping out all my old paints. You can see there's so many different skanky colours in there, um, and loads of just bits of stuff from over the years. But that doesn't matter because it's just where all the waste goes. Um, it's good to have just below your desk ready to empty out your hopper when you need to. I also use this, I believe. It took me forever to find it, but it is, I believe it comes under like tattooist equipment. Uh, if you've ever had a tattoo done, this is what they usually put the Savlon and water in, uh, and they uh, try and get it on the camera, and they sort of go like that over to wipe it away. Now, the reason I use this is because it's got a nice little nozzle for going into the hopper. Let's see if I can demonstrate this now. Just like that, and you can have it upright you don't have to tip it or anything like that to put the water in your hopper because that's when you start overfilling and you create massive accidents and a lot of mess. Uh, but with this, I tend to do a one part isopropyl alcohol to 10 parts water in this mix. As you can see, I'm running low now. Uh, and it is basically my cleaning solution throughout my session, my airbrushing session. Um, I squirt that into the hopper and I then use an old brush, a brush that I no longer use for actual painting uh, unless I was doing some very quick trying to cover stuff up or doing the edges of bases. I will then get the airbrush. I will then spray into the hopper where the paint will be. I'll spray into there and I will use the old brush and I'll just give it a quick swill around to get all of the paint that's stuck on the part of the needle in the bottom there. By doing that, you're loosening it all up as best you can. Give that a quick tip. Then, put that back in. By this point, there shouldn't really be much left in your hopper. If there is, that's not a problem. Then, use your airbrush and put a little bit of the water isopropyl mix and let it go through past the needle. Then, and this is why the gloves are really handy because they get a better seal. And on most airbrushes, you have this straight flat end, which you can just put a finger over the end. With my Infinity, I have to pinch the end on this. But what I do is, and do this slowly, you'll eventually work out what works best for you. I pinch the end, I put air in, and I just draw back a little bit. And all that does is it's effectively creating like a bubble bath or a jacuzzi in the airbrush hopper and it's getting all of the paint that you can't get to with a brush that's in this section, it's pushing it back into the hopper so it's no longer in there and you're just giving it a quick clean out. Now if you are changing paints but not necessarily changing colours, if that makes sense, uh, so you're changing shades or you're changing the type so you are going from a black to a grey or something like that, then you don't need to thoroughly flush all of it out. But this method I find cleans out my airbrush quicker than any other where I've done it. Um, and it's really handy for sort of quickly changing those colors. If you're really bold, you can just make sure you've used up all the black paint, put the gray paint in, wait until the gray paint comes out and you can use this to test it in. And there you go, you're away of it. But these, 
I find these exceedingly useful and they make things a lot quicker. Not essential, and as I say, you can go out and buy the Vallejo airbrush cleaner. I use this when I'm wrapping up a session and I know I'm not coming back to my airbrush that day. Um, you could sort of get away with it if you went away for a couple of hours and then come back, but never more than sort of 12 hours or so personally. Um, and yeah, that sort of brings us on to the Vallejo airbrush cleaner as well. This I've had for, I'm gonna say three years. This whole bottle has lasted me three years. It is the 200 milliliter bottle. Um, and yeah, it, it lasts forever because I don't use it for every bit of cleaning. I use it when I'm wrapping up a session. So, bits that you don't think you need. But, uh, so we're then gonna go on to airbrush thinner, airbrush flow improver. Um, now, the easiest way to explain this, well, you do not need to use these with your airbrush, you can use water. I personally prefer using these. Uh, I find I get much less clogging in my airbrush and I'm gonna try and explain as best as I can which one of these you use for which situation. Because there are some people who only use airbrush thinners and there are some people who only use airbrush flow improvers and that's across the board. I use these depending on what paint I'm using. So, I've got loads of paints around and now I'm trying to spot the different types. Okay, so for airbrush thinner, which is the one that most people will tell you to use. Again, this is all personal preference. If I buy paints that have a black lid, traditionally, the black lid on these dropper bottles means that it is airbrush ready. Now, I don't necessarily think that with uh, the scale 75 stuff, but Vallejo Model Air, on the other hand, definitely. You could put this into an airbrush and you wouldn't have any problems. You wouldn't need to thin it down or anything like that. So, what do you do if you come across a white top, or let's be really honest, the Scale 75 decayed metal? You use this to thin down paints that aren't pre-thinned, because on the Vallejo paints, that's pretty much what the color of the lid means. Use the airbrush thinner. Uh, you work out how much you want to use. I have heard people say that you need to make it the consistency of skimmed milk. I've heard that people say that it needs to do X, Y, and Z. The skimmed milk one's the one that I was first told and it's a load of cod's wallop. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, you basically, you will get to know your airbrush. You will get to know how it reacts. You will get to know what kind of PSI you will be working with. And that's the thing. I tend to, when I'm using scale 75 paints, I whack the PSI up on my compressor when I am using Vallejo Model Air the PSI is rather low uh, so yeah airbrush thinners for non airbrush ready paints uh, you can once again add a little bit of water if you want to save a little bit of money uh, you can use the airbrush thinner. it's completely your decision you work out what works best for you I'm telling you how I do it uh, this has lasted me I'm gonna go with two years I feel like I bought this just at the beginning of the first lockdown. Um, and I've got a bottle sat waiting to go because I use this a lot, uh, because I personally prefer the Scale 75 paints. Now, if you are using any of the Model Air paints that come with the black lid, you don't need to thin them. Let's clarify that, you don't need to. It's your personal preference if you add a little bit of water or whatever. I like to add a drop of airbrush flow improver. You don't need to do it, but it seems to just work so nice when you add flow improver. You can add thinner to these, like no problem. Like, as I say, you test all of these things, you see what works best for you. But that is when I'd start to use the flow improver. Um, not necessarily for this particular project, but it's always worth having a little bottle of neat isopropyl alcohol available. I use these fruity spray bottles, which uh, I purchased from Superdrug, which is, if you live in the UK, is a, is it like a pharma, is it like a Boots pharmacy type place? Beauty, self-care and all that sort of stuff. I think that's the best way, it's a drugstore. If you live in America, it's a drugstore. It's like a CVS. Um, and I have isopropyl alcohol just sitting in this just in case. Uh, I like to use the spray top bottle because if I need to clean this area and it's got all mucked up, you can see I haven't done it every time. Um, I can get rid of a lot of the paint there. Um, be careful 
putting neat isopropyl alcohol in your airbrush because it can wear away any of the seals. So bear that in mind. Um, primers, I personally, I use Halford's Black Spray Primer as my go-to, but I do occasionally use different colors. But if you are using anything for an airbrush, these are fantastic. I need a new bottle of this. I'm almost about to run out. This is this I have had for five years um, and it has done work for me. Uh, and I'd highly recommend it. Once again, these are the 200 milliliter bottles. Uh, I just within the last sort of year bought, bought the gray primer and it's really handy for doing a pre-shade on things. So this is a Hormi wagon that I uh, did a bit of pre-shading on. I used the black primer and then I used the grey to give it a little pre-shade so I could sort of pick out some of the bits so that if I went over it with a really light colour it would pop a little bit more. So covering various paints that I use, I use a wide array of Citadel paints uh, in various guises, uh, whether it's a base, an airbrush paint or whatever. Uh, like the Vallejo Air paints you could put this straight into your hopper and I personally would just add a bit of flow improver but completely up to you. Uh, I have recently started using rail match acrylic paints. I swore that I never would because it was all that everybody banged on about but you know what the reason they bang on about it is because they're pretty good. Um, I cannot find a paint that is as good as rail match sleeper grime in terms of like a dirty muddy brown. So much so that I now use it on Warhammer models if I'm doing a brown because it gives that nice dirty grimy look and it's spot on. Like I used to use Burnt Umber and I just still do, but this is, this is a, a new favorite of mine, which I thought I'd never say. I use Sizzle shades, they're called shades, washes, shades, inks, whatever you want to call them. My personal favorite is I, and this is a, a method that was given to me by my, my friend Jamie from The Route years and years ago now. And it is where you, you can buy Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade, which is a black and a brownie sort of wash. Uh, but if you mix the two together 50-50, so effectively have a spare bottle sitting around, get two bottles of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. Have I got two? Yes, I have, because I know that I'm about to run out. Right there. And you just can 50-50 into one of these, hence why I've got a bit of masking tape around there so I know which one it is. And it is the perfect wash for me. It's not too black and it's not too brown and it does everything I need to without me having to go over it with another color. So, yeah, very good. I would recommend, if you if you were looking for something to walk away from this video with that's cheap and easy, do a 50-50 Agrax Earthshade Null and Oil and it is just so, so handy to use. Uh, I don't tend to use washes through the airbrush as well, it's worth mentioning that. Um, I do use some of the Model Air Metallics. Uh, this metallic blue is quite tasty, I don't get to use it a lot, but it is a very nice colour. And as I said, I use a lot of Scale 75 paints. I particularly use a lot of their metals. Uh, the Decayed Metal is one of my favourites. I have their green, red and blue set, which covers a lot of the additional colours as well. Um, and all of my greens, blues and reds and colours in between are pretty much done with Scale 75. So yeah, really, really like those. Um, another little paint that's good to use, um, I, I've been told that this is basically airbrush thinner. I don't know how true that is, because I always forget that until after I've used it. But if you want a little pot of this, <laughs> like a tiny, teeny pot. Uh, Lamy and Medium by Citadel, or Games Workshop. is really handy as well. Um, the, one of the other things that I have found extremely useful are Sharpies. Uh, I did an entire Alpha Legion army using the silver, hence why it's not there, because it's absolutely worn out, uh, using a silver Sharpie and doing all of the trim and on the shoulder pads in a sharpie and it cut down the amount of time I needed to do that army drastically. Um, I haven't needed to use them as much for trains however the silver one would be fantastic for door handles and things like that uh, on carriages um, and if you want to cover an area quickly in like a base coat this is really 
easy to do if you don't need to be careful. Uh, if you've seen my previous little short video I made about doing the ends of coaches in the black, that works as well. This is probably the most surprising thing I think I've used in the last few years because they're, they're permanent, they do everything you need to very quickly. So yeah. Um, another thing for using with uh, an airbrush, it doesn't need to be sensitive, it's just that we bulk buy these for because of our little girl. Um, Baby wipes. My friend Stu from Miniature Realm Studios uh, told me that even after both of his boys were potty trained, he was still buying bags and bags of these because he's a commission painter. And it's one of the, <laughs> Stu's given me lots of advice over the years, but it's one of the ones that's definitely stuck with me the most is baby wipes. They're really handy for sort of cleaning out your hopper if you need to, um, because you can still get your nail in there to sort of grab any bits that are stuck to the side or anything like that. Um, a selection of brushes. It is completely up to you what types of brushes you use. I have various ones in here. Uh, I have some Citadel ones. I have some extremely old wash brushes from Citadel that I still use. Uh, some Citadel dry brushes. Uh, I have some Rosemary & Co, which are definitely my when I'm trying to be a really good boy and do really good painting. Uh, I've got some old Windsor & Newton ones which I don't use as much as I thought I would. Uh, and this, Army Painter brush has done me well as well over the years it is the Wargamer Regiment brush. Now I personally hate Army Painter rattle cans. I've had nothing but bad things happen with them. Uh, they've, I had one can that just started spraying randomly from the other room uh, and had to replace carpet because of it. So that sucked a big time. Um, so yeah, I don't touch Army Painter rattle cans with a, a barge pole. But that brush is good, and, and I highly recommend their brushes. And funnily enough, Stu's just done a video on their version of contrast paints, and it seems to have gone exceedingly well. So, yeah, rattle cans, no. You can go for other things, you do what you want. Um, I also use a brush cleaner. This is basically just an oil that you wet your brush, lather it up with this. You can use your hands to get it out and sort of massage the bristles little motion massage the bristles or you can roll it around in there and then do what you want uh, very handy for cleaning brushes you don't need it you can use water if you really want but I really like it that's a current theme here is I'm going to tell you that I really like something but you don't have to use it yourself uh, this is an old uh, Citadel uh, little paint mixing tray you can buy thousands of different versions of this. One of the most common ones is people just using Plasticard, because uh, then if you want to chuck it away when you're done with it, you can. Uh, this is filthy at the moment, but it has been cleaned year for years and years and years. And I just have it because I already had it. I didn't need to go out and buy anything else. But I've also seen people use bits of tile and stuff like that because the glossiness of it is really handy for mixing paints on. So you do you, a mixing palette is really good. Uh, just double checking. Uh, Liquid Mask, this is fantastic. There are various brands that do it. There's the Humbrol Mask all and things like that. But I like the this one, this Vallejo Liquid Mask. It's really good for masking off areas that you wouldn't necessarily have a fun time masking off with tape, which brings us on to tape. You can use normal masking tape if you so wish. When I am doing bulk things that I don't need to be super careful with, I will use normal masking tape. But if I'm trying to mask off bits of trains, bits of armour, um, various different things to stop bits getting paint on them. I like these. Now previously I used Tamiya but in my local model shop these are a no name brand which are half the price for double the amount of tape and I've really enjoyed using them and I use a various amount of thicknesses of these so there's, let's try and get, so there's one, two, three, I think that's my three, one, two, they are my three different thicknesses. Uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you what they are. You do, you do you. Whatever works best for you in terms of thickness. And then having some good masking tape to the side is always handy to, once you've masked, masked off the finicky bits, you can just use bigger masking tape to sort of cover off the big areas that you don't need to do. Uh, and finally, for the equipment that we're using over the course of this period, uh, Let's go with transfers next. So you will need a sharp hobby knife to do this and a bit of kitchen roll. 
and Microset and Microsol. I have tried doing this on different types of transfers and even some where they tell you to do X, Y, and Z and I've ignored it and used this method and this method just works for me. Um, you will also need either airbrush friendly gloss, gloss varnish or a rattle can of Halfords clear gloss varnish. Um, I cannot stress enough that if you're using the rattle can of gloss varnish, you need to shake the heck out of it. You cannot be half assed with it. I'd I'd say if you could do it for a full five minutes of shaking that rattle can, do it because you don't. The, if you spray that rattle can of gloss varnish, there's a chance that if you haven't shaken it well enough, it will come out and look like crap. So, warning there, and I'll do a warning before we actually use it. Um, yes, yeah, so a microset and Microsoft for doing transfers. Uh, they are basically one of them softens the transfer so it can sort of go into the line. So if you you're putting a transfer on a shoulder pad. Uh, and the shoulder pad is curved, the micro set, the micro set sort of not melts it, but it softens it and allows it to sort of go around the curves a lot better. Um, Microsoul basically once it's done its bit and gone into the grooves that it needs to go to, hardens it. And they are really, really good. Finally, uh, when it comes to weathering and stuff, you can use weathering powders and whatever you so wish. However, it's going to look excessive, you can buy smaller ones of this, but I've used enough of it to know that I needed a big one. Windsor & Newton's Oil Colour Artist's White Spirit. Uh, it doesn't smell anywhere near as bad as white spirit, as normal white spirit, uh, but it does a very good job for when you are doing oils on your logos and stuff. Now there are two methods for this. Uh, you can use the oil paints, oil paints straight out of the tube put them on the model and then use the white spirit to uh, work away at them until you're happy with the level of weathering that's on there. Or you can add white spirit to them and make a very watery mitt, or not very, you do use whichever thickness that you want, but you can make a mix of them already. So these, as you can see, this is the old <laughs> white spirit container uh, with my sort of rusty orangey color in there. And this is the one that's got my raw umber in there, which is my darky browny bit. Uh, used for the weathering um, and it's always good to just have those little things on standby as I say hopefully during this process you'll work, find out which one works for you because I'm going to do both methods and you can decide which one works for you um, for that use old cheap brushes do not use your nice brushes for doing any of the oil paint work that we're going to be doing later down the line the this pack here is a pack of little brushes which I paid two pound for uh, and it doesn't matter because you can get two times you can get synthetic or these are non-synthetic I can't remember uh, soft bristles basically um, and these are my this old <laughs> old paintbrush is my applying my oil paints so I just put it on hence why it's a, horrific colors because it's done so many and then these ones are my working away at the oil paints to um, get them off there you can also use cotton buds that is a personal decision uh, I have a pack of cotton buds standing by uh, and whilst the environment stuff is great I'd always re recommend that you get the cardboard tubed ones but since a lot of companies have moved over to the cardboard tube ones I have found that the cotton buds aren't as good Hence why I use my brushes a lot more now, but you can have a pack sat there for giving it a go. You work out what works best for you. So, that is, as far as I'm aware, all of the equipment that we will be using over the course of this, uh, this project. Um, primers and stuff is very much a case of you do you. You can either use these or use a rattle can completely your decision. I prefer a rattle cam because it's fast and I can do a big bulk of things very quickly. Uh, so yeah, this has been a very long video. Hopefully you'll uh, have found some bits of equipment that you go, oh, I've never used that before. I'm gonna grab some of that and give it a try. Um, in terms of purchasing paints, if I'm really honest, most of my paints, rail match I get from any shop that has them in stock whether that's Gage Master or Alton Models. Uh, he has a good stock of them as well. 
Um, my Scale 75, I always order my Scale 75 from Incon Gaming. Uh, Chip has a massive selection of uh, Scale 75 paints there and I always purchase them from him because that's the first place I found them and he does an amazing thing for his local community. I'm just glad that I don't get to go up there anywhere near as much. Uh, so yeah, Incom Gaming for my Scale 75 paints. Uh, Vallejo Model A you can pretty much get from most model shops. Um, Amazon is a very good one as well. But you do you. You purchase them from wherever you want. I'm not going to tell you where's, where's best for your budget or anything like that. So yeah, thank you for watching this video. Uh, hopefully that's covered everything that we need to go. In the next video you are going to be hearing from some of my friends um, about their painting tips and tricks and their bits and then the week after that we are going to be cracking on with the actual project so you've had this video talking about all of your equipment you've got the next video where it's a little bit of a fun one where we're going to be seeing members of the Warhammer and the model railway community giving their opinions on what they like what they don't like what their favorite things to paint are and things like that and then the week after that we're going to knuckle down and we're going to get stuck in with the project so thank you very very much for watching if there's a piece of kit that i haven't talked about in this video that you want to see or that you use that you think whoa why is that not in your your arsenal of things uh, then please leave a comment down below uh, if there's anything that you're shocked by that you want to know more about i'm always happy to have a conversation down in the comments down below uh, I hope you enjoy this series and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks very much.